Hi there, health enthusiasts. Ever wondered what happens to your cholesterol levels if you eat 100 eggs in seven days? Today, we're diving into a fascinating experiment where we'll use a fictional character named John, based on real facts, to explore this curiosity. This isn't just about counting eggs or tracking cholesterol numbers. It's about understanding the complexity of our bodies, the role of cholesterol, and the factors that can truly impact our health. John will bravely venture into this experiment, consuming 100 eggs over a week and drawing blood before and after to see the results. But as we'll discover, cholesterol is more than just numbers on a lab report. It's a vital component of our well-being, and there's much more to it than meets the eye. So buckle up and prepare for an enlightening journey into the world of cholesterol. Stick around to learn why asking did the cholesterol go up is the wrong question. Before diving into the results, grasp how cholesterol works and how it's reported. Cholesterol is a waxy, fat-like substance that's found in all the cells in your body. Your body needs cholesterol to make hormones, vitamin D, and substances that help you digest foods. Your body makes all the cholesterol it needs, but cholesterol is also found in some of the foods you eat. Now, cholesterol moves through your bloodstream in small packages called lipoproteins. These packages are made of fat on the inside and proteins on the outside. There are two kinds of lipoproteins that carry cholesterol throughout your body. Low-density lipoproteins, LDL, and high-density lipoproteins, HDL. Having healthy levels of both is important. LDL cholesterol sometimes is called bad cholesterol. A high LDL level leads to a buildup of cholesterol in your arteries. On the other hand, HDL cholesterol sometimes is called good cholesterol. This is because it carries cholesterol from other parts of your body back to your liver. Your liver then removes the cholesterol from your body. But let's not jump to conclusions just yet. There's a lot more to cholesterol than just good and bad. For instance, the size and number of LDL particles in your blood can also play a role in your risk of heart disease. Large, fluffy LDL particles are generally considered less harmful than small, dense LDL particles. And then there's triglycerides, another type of fat in your blood. When you eat, your body converts any calories it doesn't need to use right away into triglycerides. If you regularly eat more calories than you burn, particularly from high carbohydrate foods, you may have high triglycerides. With these basics, the results of this experiment will be meaningful. Remember, understanding cholesterol is not just about knowing your total cholesterol level. It's about comprehending the whole picture and how these different aspects of cholesterol interact with each other and your overall health. Now let's look at the big picture, the balance between key markers. After our fictional character John consumed 100 eggs in seven days, some interesting changes occurred. First, let's talk about total cholesterol John's levels went from 207 to 277. That's a rise of 70 points. Seems alarming, right? But we need to look beyond these numbers and consider the overall risk factors. Next, let's discuss LDL, often referred to as bad cholesterol. John's LDL level swelled from 136 to 201. Again, the change might seem significant, but it's not as alarming as it appears at first glance. Moving on to triglycerides, these stayed roughly the same. Triglycerides are a type of fat found in your blood. When you eat, your body converts any calories it doesn't need to use right away into triglycerides. Lastly, we have HDL, often lauded as the good cholesterol. After consuming 100 eggs in seven days, John's HDL levels went up. This is generally a good sign, but remember, more isn't always better. Now you might be thinking, shouldn't we be concerned about these changes? Well. It's not that simple. Cholesterol isn't inherently bad. In fact, it's an essential substance for the body needed for creating cell membranes, vitamin D, certain hormones, and other vital substances. Problems arise when the balance between these key markers gets skewed. So while John's cholesterol levels did increase after consuming 100 eggs, it's important to remember that these numbers are part of a larger picture. Cholesterol is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to overall health. Other factors such as diet, exercise, genetics, and lifestyle choices also play a significant role. In the end, it's not as much about the cholesterol numbers as it is about maintaining a healthy balance and understanding your body. Seems alarming, but let's talk about risk factors.
Besides the key markers, other factors also came into play. As we take a deeper dive into the numbers, we need to consider the changes in TSH levels and LDL particle size. Now, you might be wondering, what is TSH? TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, is a hormone that controls thyroid function. The thyroid gland, in turn, plays a pivotal role in controlling the body's metabolism. In our experiment, we noted an increase in John's TSH levels post the egg consumption. This increase suggests a slowing down of his thyroid function, which can indirectly affect cholesterol metabolism. Even though the connection between cholesterol and TSH levels is complex and multifaceted, it's an important piece of the puzzle that can't be overlooked. Moving on, let's talk about LDL particle size. LDL, or low-density lipoprotein, often dubbed as bad cholesterol, carries cholesterol to the body's cells. But not all LDL particles are equal. It's the smaller, denser LDL particles that are more etherogenic, meaning they are more likely to form plaque in the arteries, leading to heart disease. After consuming 100 eggs in seven days, John's LDL particle size did shift towards the smaller end of the spectrum, making them somewhat worse for his cardiovascular health. It's important to remember that these numbers are not just numbers. They represent a dynamic and interconnected system within our bodies. Changes in one aspect can have ripple effects, influencing other areas in ways that we might not fully understand yet. John's experiment was a small piece in a much larger puzzle of understanding cholesterol and its impact on our health. The takeaway here is that it's not just about the total cholesterol or LDL levels. The story of cholesterol is more complicated than that. It's about the balance of different components, their interactions and how they function together as a system. So, while John's LDL particles got a bit worse, we need to remember this is just one part of a much larger picture. Before we continue, let's understand the limitations of this study. It's important to note that we're basing our insights on the experiences of a single individual, our fictional character John. This is what's known as an N of one study. In scientific research, such studies are often used as a stepping stone to larger, more conclusive experiments. Now, what does this mean for the results we're discussing? It's simple. John's results may not be typical. Each person's body responds differently to dietary changes, depending on factors like genetics, overall metabolic health, and lifestyle. So while John's cholesterol levels showed certain changes after consuming 100 eggs in a week, your body might react differently to the same experiment. Another critical aspect to consider is the duration of the study. Our experiment spanned only seven days, a relatively short time frame to observe changes in cholesterol levels. Chronic shifts in cholesterol levels often take longer to materialize, and they're usually the ones that have significant impacts on health. Moreover, the study didn't account for other factors that could affect cholesterol levels. For instance, stress, physical activity, and other dietary components could all play a role in altering cholesterol. It's also worth mentioning that, while we used real facts to create John's scenario, the experiment itself is hypothetical. We're using it as a tool to understand the complex workings of cholesterol, rather than as a definitive guide to the effects of egg consumption on health. In essence, this study is a simplified model. It's a way to explore the possible impact of a high egg diet on cholesterol levels, but it's not a one-size-fits-all answer. Remember, health is a complex puzzle with many pieces, and cholesterol is just one piece of that puzzle. It doesn't exist in a vacuum, and its levels can be influenced by a myriad of factors. So, while we can learn valuable lessons from this study, it's essential to consider it in the broader context of overall health. This study is only seven days long. Inflammation can skew results. Now you might be wondering, how does that work? Let's break it down. Inflammation is the body's response to injury or infection. It's a complex process that involves a variety of cells and biochemical reactions. But here's the kicker. Inflammation doesn't just happen at the site of an injury. It can also occur within the bloodstream affecting cholesterol levels. When inflammation occurs, it can lead to changes in the composition of the blood, including the levels of lipids such as cholesterol. For instance, if John had an allergic reaction during the seven-day egg experiment, it could have triggered an inflammatory cascade. This would impact the cholesterol levels in his blood, potentially skewing the results of our experiment. 
So when we look at cholesterol levels, we need to consider the role that inflammation can play. It's not just about the numbers. Events like inflammation can affect cholesterol levels. Understanding the margin of error is crucial. As we delve deeper into our experiment, we need to consider potential variances in our results. When John had his blood drawn, the samples were sent off to different departments for analysis. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, if it's the same blood, the results should be the same, right? Well, not exactly. Every lab has its own set of procedures, equipment and technicians, all of which can contribute to slight variations in results. It's a bit like baking a cake. Even if you use the same ingredients and follow the same recipe, the cake can turn out slightly different each time, depending on the oven's temperature, the mixing method, or even the humidity in the kitchen that day. Applying this to our experiment, even though it was the same blood, the cholesterol levels measured in one department might differ slightly from those measured in another. This is known as the margin of error, and it's something scientists always take into account when interpreting results. In John's case, the margin of error was around 8%. That means, hypothetically, his cholesterol levels could be 8% higher or lower than reported. And while that might seem like a significant variation, in the grand scheme of things, it's not. Imagine you're looking at a painting. If you're standing far away, a small smudge in the corner isn't going to drastically change your overall impression of the artwork. It's the same with John's cholesterol levels. Minor fluctuations within the margin of error don't significantly alter the big picture. So, when we're analyzing John's cholesterol results, we're not getting hung up on minor changes in numbers. Instead, we're looking at the broader trends, the overall shifts, and that's where the real, meaningful insights lie. This variation means that small changes in numbers may not be significant. Remember, the devil is in the details, but the truth is in the trends. Now let's move on to understand what is considered healthy cholesterol. Let's question the conventional wisdom that lower cholesterol is always better. This belief has been ingrained in our minds for decades, but is it really the complete truth? The answer is not as straightforward as you might think. When we talk about cholesterol, a molecule that is essential for our body's functioning, it's crucial to understand that it is not inherently bad. Cholesterol is a vital component of our cell membranes and plays a key role in the production of hormones and vitamin D. It also aids in the digestion of fats through the creation of bile acids. So if cholesterol is so important, why is it often demonized? The answer lies in the balance and types of cholesterol in our bodies. While high levels of low-density lipoprotein, or LDL, often referred to as bad cholesterol, can lead to health issues like heart disease, the high-density lipoprotein, or HDL, known as good cholesterol, has a protective effect. Here's the twist, though. Several studies over the past few years have begun to challenge the notion that lower cholesterol is always better. Some research even suggests that very low levels of cholesterol may be linked to higher mortality rates. A study published in the American Journal of Medicine found that among a group of elderly people, those with low cholesterol had a significantly higher risk of dying. Similarly, research published in the Journal of Psychiatric Research suggested that low cholesterol levels could be linked to a higher risk of depression and anxiety. The key takeaway here is that our understanding of cholesterol and its impact on health is complex and nuanced. It's not just about low versus high, but about balance and the overall picture of our health. So, the next time you hear about cholesterol, remember, it's not a one-size-fits-all situation. What's healthy for one person might not be the same for another. It's always best to consult a healthcare professional for personalized advice based on your unique health profile and lifestyle. Lower cholesterol can actually be more dangerous. A study published in Nature looked at cholesterol levels and all-cause mortality in 12.8 million Koreans. This study, a colossal undertaking in the world of health research, has thrown a curveball into our understanding of cholesterol. The researchers embarked on this study with a clear goal, to scrutinize cholesterol levels and their correlation with overall mortality. The sheer scale of the study involving millions of adults gives the findings a significant weight. But what were these findings, you ask? Well, prepare for a surprise. Contrary to popular belief, 
the Korean study discovered that having low cholesterol isn't necessarily a ticket to longevity. In fact, the results showed quite the opposite. The study found that individuals with lower cholesterol levels actually faced a higher risk of death. Yes, you heard that right. Lower cholesterol was associated with a higher mortality rate, a result that certainly challenges the conventional wisdom we've been fed about cholesterol. But the surprises didn't stop there. The research also revealed that in older adults, higher cholesterol levels seem to be protective against brain diseases. Yes, the cholesterol we've been told to keep in check might actually be a shield for our brain health. Now, this doesn't mean we should all start gorging on cholesterol-rich foods without a second thought. Remember, this is just one study, and its findings should be taken in context with other research. But it does suggest that our understanding of cholesterol is far from complete, and perhaps it's time to question the conventional wisdom. So, what's the takeaway here? Well, the so-called danger zone for cholesterol, as depicted by mainstream health advice, might not be as dangerous as we've been led to believe. In fact, according to the Korean study, it was actually the safest. So as we continue this journey of understanding cholesterol's role in our health, let's remember that things aren't always as black and white as they seem. Now let's delve deeper into the final conclusions of the Korean study. High cholesterol and mortality. Interestingly, they found that individuals with higher cholesterol levels had a lower risk of all-cause mortality compared to those with very low cholesterol levels. Specifically, those with cholesterol levels above 240 mg per deciliter had a 30% higher risk of death compared to those with levels between 200 and 240 mg per deciliter. However, those with cholesterol levels below 160 mg per deciliter had a 230% higher risk of death. Protective effects the study suggested that higher cholesterol levels might offer protective effects, especially in older adults, potentially due to its role in brain health and hormone production. Higher cholesterol was linked to lower rates of neurological diseases such as dementia and Parkinson's disease. The study also noted differences based on gender and age. For instance, women generally had higher cholesterol levels than men, but the protective effect was more pronounced in women. Similarly, Older adults benefited more from higher cholesterol levels compared to younger individuals. Metabolic health. Another key finding was the relationship between cholesterol levels and metabolic health. High cholesterol was less of a concern in metabolically healthy individuals. In contrast, those with metabolic syndrome or diabetes had worse outcomes regardless of cholesterol levels, highlighting the importance of overall metabolic health. The study's findings were eye-opening. This was a significant revelation, challenging the widely held belief that high cholesterol is inherently dangerous. One possible explanation for this protective effect could lie in the role of cholesterol in our bodies. The researchers of the Korean study hypothesized that higher cholesterol levels might provide a sort of buffer against the damaging effects of age-related brain diseases. This could be because cholesterol aids in the repair of damaged cells and helps to maintain the integrity of neural pathways. In conclusion, the Korean study has provided invaluable insights into the role of cholesterol in our health. It has challenged the conventional wisdom and opened the door for more nuanced and individualized approaches to cholesterol management. High cholesterol was actually protective against brain diseases in older adults. This intriguing conclusion encourages us to rethink our understanding of cholesterol and its impact on our health Insulin and triglycerides are crucial markers. John's were in the optimal range, indicating good metabolic health. In summary, John doesn't recommend eating 100 eggs in seven days. It's a stunt, not a lifestyle. His results showed some changes, but overall risk remained low. Understand how cholesterol works before considering medication. Don't let perfect metabolism and healthy cholesterol levels lead to unnecessary medication. Learn, share, and save lives by understanding cholesterol better. If you enjoyed this video, check out the next one and subscribe for more insights into how the body really works. Thank you for joining us on this exploration into cholesterol and the 100 eggs challenge. We hope you found it enlightening and helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Your support helps us keep creating content that matters. 
We'd love to hear your thoughts, experiences, and any questions you might have. So don't hesitate to leave a comment below. We're always eager to engage with our community and keep the conversation going. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. That way, you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. We're always working on new content, and we've got some exciting topics lined up for you. And lastly, remember that knowledge is power, especially when it comes to your health. So stay informed, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video.